So my job is to, to send you out for your conversations. I'll recap a little bit about what Gunnar was talking about um, and the situation that we face, our, face right now. I think the biggest thing is everything about this presentation is focused on this fiscal year. But I'll remind you again at the end of this, this isn't about fiscal year 16 as much as it is about the state we want five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. So we're just using this fiscal year to frame the discussion. So please keep your mind forward looking. So we uh, came together as a cabinet and, uh, and talked about what, what was important for us from a, from a purpose and priority and value perspective. And our values are, are strong. And the very first one and the first and foremost is public trust. And this particular event and the events we'll hold throughout the summer and fall really exhibit our interest in, in getting the highest level of public trust and getting the highest level of involvement in the issues that are going to affect Alaskans. Respect, persistence. We don't think this is going to be an easy, easy issue to solve, uh, but we're in, in it for the long haul. Uh, service and teamwork. We, we are a team that, that want to serve Alaska, and, uh, and that's why we're here. The purpose, we want to energize Alaska, Alaska at, in more than one way. <laughs> Our spirit, but also uh, take advantage of everything we can that Alaska has to offer. And, and focus, I think both the Lieutenant Governor and Governor talked about this last night. We want to improve the life of every Alaskan. Um, few of the visions, transforming energy production, healthy, safe family, uh, healthy and safe families, and healthy communities. This includes education, uh, very, very high, high um, interest in education in that particular bullet. And then, of course, a sustainable budget. How do we get from here to there? So what does a budget mean? It really does mean a balanced budget. <laughs> uh, we, we were fortunate or unfortunate to get, get a budget passed by the legislature this year that wasn't balanced. And it was a $5 billion spending plan for a, with a $2 billion checkbook. Um, that's why they're kind of still doing what they're doing. So we, we hope that they can come up with that other, uh, other $3 billion. Um, but it really, it's a policy document. What's important to us? What do we want Alaska to be? And, this, and so be thinking when you're in your groups about the budget will represent what Alaska is going to be. So help us describe what we want our Alaska to look like. So framing our total, we have about a you know, $12.3 billion total budget. It's made up of federal funds. Permanent funds, other state funds, that's things like AHFC and ADA and designated general funds, that's tuition and fees, fishing license, um, you know, fee for service, DMVA, or not DMVA, DMV, you know, car, car registrations, things like that. So, you know, it's, it's real money, it's $900 million, but small relative to the whole. And then it's the unrestricted general fund. And that, that's where we'll be focusing. Here's, that's the total spend plan we have. And this is the problem we face. Of, of that spend plan, or, or of, of that total expected revenue, we're short almost $3 billion in that general fund category. Dropping down to just what the general fund pays for. Um, formula programs, that's K-12, Medicaid, um, and a few other programs, mostly in the health and social services area. Agency non-formula, that's everything like fish and game, university, transportation, but it's not, not funded by the legislature, but not in a formulaic way. Then there's the capital budget. This is as small as the capital budget has been in 15 years. Then payment and obligations. Uh, Gunnar talked about this last night. 
debt service, retirement payments, oil and gas tax credits. So of that, only 40% is covered by our annual revenue. So that's what we pay for with our unrestricted general funds. That's stuff that we have the, can choose to do uh, with. So we have consistently lowered our call on unrestricted general funds for the last several years. It did, it did come up from 2006 up, but starting in 2013, it's dropped down. So the, the light blue bar on 2015, that was a $3 billion uh, deposit into the retirement fund um, from the CBR. So, but we went from eight billion to seven billion to six billion, and now we're at five billion. And uh, but again, going back to here, the pieces and parts of that actually, my better, I've got a better graph next. So that that's the part of that five point one billion. So I'm going to kind of depart here to uh, some of the things that we've been doing. To move the dial from 6.1 to 5.1 or 5.1 down, is, uh, there's multiple things. And people say, well, just get more efficient. And, and we plan to get more efficient. Uh, we, every commissioner here is going through internal departmental efficiencies but we're also looking at cross-departmental efficiencies. So we asked public and employees when we first came into office uh, what their savings ideas were. Uh, we've, we've looked internally now that we've been on for a few months, and we've all gotten together and says, what are the things that are cross-departmental that we really want to do that could provide efficiencies? So we're looking at the travel process. We're looking at IT consolidations. We're looking at um, f centralization of fi fine collections, centralization of loan, loan programs, um, process improvement, and then unifying our facilities management across, across the state. These, uh, these things are important, and we're working hard at them. In total, 30 to 70 million in the grand scheme against a 5.5 billion dollar, or $5.1 billion total. So I wanted to let you know we are working on these. It's important, and we'll continue on them. Um, but framing a little bit about what efficiencies will gain us, and that really what we're talking about here is about the services we want um, going forward. So we looked at, too, at how does Alaska's budget compare? to other states. And if you remember last night, Gunnar had a graph that shows income tax and um, sales tax that are paid in other states. And if we colored these dots, there'd only be, Alaska would be the only dot that wasn't colored with a broad-based tax of income tax or sales tax. So, and what this graph shows is, based on population, what would be the appropriate size of government if we were just at the average of all other states? And it says, if, if we dropped Alaska down to that line, it says our budget should be about $5.3 billion. So if you take the big four states out and you drop Alaska down to that line, it would say Alaska should be about $4.8 billion. So if you're looking at our state expenditures, even, even though we pay, from a state perspective, a lot of services that are normally done in a local, we're not very far from the line. This is, this is at our peak of spending 19, 19, 2009 to 13, so we look far from the line here. But today we're at $5.1 billion. And then also if you look at where we are in a, compared to ourselves, if you look back into that trough, the late 90s, early 2000s, when our state spending was the low lowest it's been because of no new revenues over a, about a 12-year period. If you look at that and say, where do we stand today? After the cuts made in this last year, we're within 
among agency operations, $200 million. Of where we were in the lowest years, 1999 to 2001. So again, using two comparisons, they're broad-based, they're not scientific, but we're not very far off. But here's the challenge. Um, Gunner was optimistic, I think, at $70 a barrel oil. <laughs> Uh, our Commissioner of Revenue said, yeah, we, we probably should use $70 barrel oil. As the uh, conservative budgeter, <laughs> I'm looking, what happens if it's $50 a barrel oil? So the three, gra three lines, the vertical lines, are our state budget. The uh, squiggly lines are the revenue we can expect at different prices of oil. It's $50 a barrel oil. The next line up is $80 a barrel oil. And the next line up is the, is the revenue the revenue projection. Regardless, at whatever price of oil you look at, it doesn't cover our state spending. The slow so, um, and our, among that $5.1 billion graph, and we're talking about formula programs and payments and obligations, the top three, education, payments and obligations, that's debt service, retirement, and oil and gas tax credits is a second bar. Third bar is health and social services. Those three pieces are $3.6 billion. Agency operations and the capital budget is the remainder. We have $2.2 billion of revenue. So. So these will be big topics today. OK, here's the spread. And this is what I wanted to get to, to send everybody out on to, into their groups. Remember when you're looking at your service areas. We have the big ones, education, payments and obligations, health and social services. Then you get kind of the big ones that are still small, or smaller, relatively speaking, university, corrections, and transportation. Then you have public safety, law, natural resources. So when you're in your groups, each of you have your groups, each, each one of these bars will be represented in the group at a service level. Be thinking about the magnitude that your group has on the total budget. Um, and understand, you know, that service may be vitally important and it might be small, or that service might be vitally important and it's this big. So be thinking about the scale as you walk into your, your groups today and understand, you know, what you're talking about when you're talking about law. It's, you know, all the way to the right. You're looking at the governor's office. It's all the way to the right. Um, looking at education, it's big. Um, so keep that in mind. And with that, I'll leave you with this. Uh, if you didn't get a new sheet of assignments this morning, look for the new sheet of assignments this morning um, for where, where you're going. Use your commissioners as your resource for questions. Use each other. The number of people in here that have dealt with the fiscal situation in the state uh, over many, many years, we have tremendous expertise. Chancellor Rogers, Cliff Grow, Scott Goldsmith is here, Brad Keithley is here, Gunnar Knapp. Use the people um, who have dealt with this situation, understand it, use the expertise that is here, but also use your fellow uh, group members to, to really understand what's important to us. And with that, Enjoy good conversations.